rig starting. I'm working on their crooks. That's on. They are? But they haven't done anything wrong. The yeah. recording's on. Well, that's good yeah, news. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do executive session. Want to do it today? Yep. Okay. Today. Okay. So I don't know whether you want me to say it up front Let's or do it. when yeah. we get down there to it. Let's do it uh, during our old, we'll do it for the old business. But I don't really need to bring it up until then, unless you want to mention let's, it Let's now. do it right from the beginning. Mention it. In addition yeah. to the agenda. <coughs> what do you put on? We're going to do an addition to the agenda for an executive session. Oh, hello. All right. Hi, Bob. I'm good. Okay, it's 4.30. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. For public information, a copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted on the east wall of the commissioner's room. Roll call, please. Meyer? Here. Harris? Here. Knapper? Here. Reisig? Here. Blue? Here. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Sheriff, how long will you be at the meeting today? Uh, for about 45 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Move on to approval of the agenda. Uh, I would ask, I would ask for a <coughs> executive session when we get to uh, the old business on the 10th Street building, please. And the reason for the executive session is to discuss uh, contract. I'd like to add something else to the agenda, just a discussion on. Um, can we can we act on this one first? Oh, sorry. Well, Please. We need to do a Wait, motion. Are we, yes. Are we modifying the agenda? We are modifying the agenda can, to an executive session. Right. We're adding that, and then you have something to add as well. Okay, we can do it all in one motion. Then. Right. Okay, please. you're right. I'm sorry, Kelly. That's Go ahead, Charlie. Add. I'm sorry. Um, I would just like to add a discussion on our um, January decision to name the Star Herald as our publication of official record. Okay, we can do that under a general agenda item. Um, we can add that to the bottom of here. It should be fine. Is that all right with you at the bottom of the yeah. general agenda? Okay. Okay, any other changes, modifications? If not, to entertain a motion for approval of the agenda with the <coughs> two uh, additions. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda with a modification. Is, there a, is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Record your votes, please. Okay, to close? Close. Five yeses. Thank you. Uh, again, we want to remor remove, remind everybody that the board does reserve the right to enter into a closed session, which we just did uh, on the agenda. <coughs> Moving on to the consent agenda. Anybody like anything removed from the consent agenda, please? If not, I would entertain a motion for approval as presented. Well, I move that we approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Record your votes, please. Okay to close? Close, please. And we've got five yeses. Thank you. Need a motion to move into a board of equalization? I believe we, we go into a uh, board of equalization. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Any discussion? Record your votes. To close? close. And we've got five yeses. Okay. Uh, first item is uh, consider and approve one motor vehicle exemption for Northfield Assembly of God Church in Gearing. Heather. So 
This is a 2016 Honda HRV that is used for church activities. Uh, the total tax loss on this vehicle is $125.40. It has been previously exempt, and I would recommend approval. Okay. It's the board's pleasure. I'd uh, move that we uh, uh, accept the motor vehicle exemption as described by Heather. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Please record your votes. Okay to close. Close, please. Okay. We have five yeses. Did a motion to receive the tax list corrections, please. I move that we accept the tax list corrections. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Record your votes. Okay to close. Close, please. Need a motion to come out of? I have five yeses. Need a motion to come out of Board of Equalization. I'll move we come out of Board of Equalization. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second that. Any uh, further discussion? Record your votes, please. Okay to close. Close, please. Can under general under general agenda items, receive presentation from NPPD regarding the transmission line power. Uh, Paul Brune, NPPD safety, uh, or excuse me, Shelby May Hash, uh, ROW agent, HDR Todd uh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thought we'd stop back and talk to you about the route that was selected for our new transmission line. I believe I came up here last fall to kind of kick it off, let you know what we're doing. Uh, we have gone through the steps and we have selected our route. So thought I'd bring you up to speed and then eventually I'll introduce you some of the people that will be working in the community here, uh, talking to landowners and getting easements and right of access, things like that. Um, <clears throat> we go to page two, talk about the benefits just briefly. I talked to you about them in September, but again, we've got increased demand here in this region around the city and in the city. Uh, there's congestion on the system at times. In other words, the system is full, and uh, we want to make sure we have a reliable system. So those are really the three drivers that uh, initiated the project to get started. Um, if you go over to the next page there, uh, we can just kind of talk about uh, the schedule here a little bit. Uh, we've been at this for eight months. We started the public input process, gathering input. Uh, we conducted three phases of meetings, an initial public meeting, a second public meeting, and then a per third public meeting, and then a public hearing. And those were either in Gary or in Scott Club locations where we held those. <coughs> so we have selected the final route, and um, the letters were mailed last Thursday to the affected landowners. And then later this week or next week, we will send out a newsletter to all the initial landowners that were invited, because we invited a lot because we didn't have our route picked. So we're going to bring them up to speed on where we're at. So just the ones that will be affected by the line receive the letter. Uh, if you want to go over to this page here, um, on the left-hand side uh, shows the picture of the area, and there's some gold lines in there. Those are all the segments we proposed to look at the first time around before we talked to the public. So we invited a lot of people, everyone on those segments there, gathered input, did some more engineering analysis, and then we got to November, and based upon the input from the landowners, either in person or on the virtual system, we had a virtual open house, and uh, we narrowed it down to a proposed and an alternate route. And we had another public meeting, presented this to the landowners that were involved here on those two routes, took their input, again, in person, and through the virtual system, went back and analyzed all the input from the beginning to end, and then we came up in March with the proposed route. That route there had the least
least amount of impact to <coughs> landowners, residents, schools, churches, and all that. So that's, that's really what we look for is minimize the impact. We know we're going to impact people, but we try to minimize that as much as possible. Okay? I'm going to turn the page there. Uh, let's see, I turned the wrong one. These things aren't working very well, are they? Somebody didn't print this very well. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm confused myself here. Huh? I'm going the wrong way. Yeah. Um, should look like this. Some pictures. I think that's the page we're on. Um, total of 185 people attended the open houses. We had over 200 people on the virtual open house. Again, people who couldn't make it to the meeting chose to look at it at night or during the day. We had more people do that. So, you know, the, the view is kind of shifting on how they want their information. So I'm kind of glad we did this. That was the first time the district did that. And uh, we had over 300 comments from landowners and the public along the way. <coughs> okay. Now I think we're on this one here. Yeah. Um, again, we announced the final route on the 11th of May. <coughs> um, the letters went out to the landowners. Newsletters are going to go out to the people who were all initially invited on the 15th of this month. So that will go out. We will have this map in there so they know where it's going. And it will kind of explain the next steps and the next processes. Um, this page here, if you're trying to follow along. Um, we're going to have right of way agents out signing uh, right of entry agreements with the affected landowners so we can get on through surveying and uh, things of that nature. I'm going to start the surveying and the mapping part of it so we start designing the line. And again, we will get right of entry agreements with all the landowners prior to entering that land. When you're right away, did you uh, did you have any anybody uh, resist this thing? Or, I mean, did it go fairly smooth or how was your meeting? I think, in my opinion, it went fairly smooth. Did we have someone that didn't, a few that didn't care for it? Yes, we did. I, I won't tell you anything different than us, but overall, from experience from other projects, I thought this went very well. So Were they more concerned about the overhead lines or actual construction work? A um, little bit of both, I think, Ken. Um, and, and the construction work, um, we will compensate them and make them whole after the project is done and, and do our absolute best to work with them doing that. Uh, the visual part of it, there was some visual, there were some concerns maybe, what is this do to future development of my property? Will that inhibit what I'm doing? Uh, you know, we got a pretty narrow right away, so it wasn't a big concern. What is your width of your right away on that? Um, it is 30 feet, or is that right, guys? 60 feet, 30, 30 feet either That's side. That's a pretty good size wider right away. Yeah. So what is your elevation, your lowest elevation on this? I'd have to ask the engineers, but I would estimate that the distance from ground to the lowest phase would be 25 feet, 24, somewhere in there. Hmm. That's trouble I run into. I'm a house mover. I just like it. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> just don't move any two-story houses. You'll be all right. Yeah, you just have to leave those set or burn <laughs> them that's, down. That's all. Look at the top on the two. Yeah, that's all you can do. So uh, now I'll, I'll help with the names here. I want to introduce some people. You know, we've got some of the right-of-way agents here that will be knocking on the doors, talking to the landers. So I want you to know who they are in case you get calls, and so you know who we're talking with here. We got Shelby Mayash. He's one of the right-of-way agents. He's with Hi. HDR out of Omaha. Has worked for the district before. And we got Todd Mulick. Todd is back there. Todd has worked with us on numerous projects. He's also with HDR, and uh, both of them are very good with landowners. Shelby was alive in a lot of our open houses mm -hmm. as we went through and met a lot of the people, so he knows a lot of them already. And then we have Ryan Dykes. He's with Westwood. Uh, he'll be leading up the surveyors to go out and survey where we're going to build a new line. You, sur you survey full locations, then any trees that need to remove. That That's correct, to. yes, yes. <coughs> okay. Uh, if you want to go over to this page here, <coughs> kind of a little bit of a high-level schedule. Um, again, we're going to start right away activities here this summer, and that will be in cooperation at the same time with the line design up until this fall and winter sometime. Um, then we're going to start bringing in materials probably the fall of 24. We're going to
to start construction in the fall of 24. <coughs> the plan is to be done by the spring of 25 with all construction. So and then we have a few cleanup activities and uh, things along that line. But again, we plan to be done eh, May 20, May of 2025. Um, the next page there, you know, if, if you do have questions, don't hesitate to call that number. Get to get to me or someone who can respond. Uh, at, at what point, if you were reimbursing property owners, is that done before the project starts or when the project is finished? That's one of the questions that I had asked. Do we compensate them for it prior to construction or once we sign the easement, we compensate them? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Ross Kibauer. I'm with the land, uh, excuse me, land Management Department of Lowe's. We'll compensate folks for the easement that we purchased prior to construction. And then once construction is completed, the guys will come back and settle up on any damages that we might have created, whether we're in folks' yards and maybe ran over sprinkler heads or uh, maybe broke a, a sidewalk up with a big truck or we'll compensate folks for compaction out in the crop fields and just basically, you know, whatever wasn't there prior to us being there. So, so all agreements are complete before you start anything? Before we start construction. Every, everybody all along the line has all been, all, have either been compensated or signed some type of agreement. You know, that's not to say we wouldn't start on the south end without having some areas up north where we have purchased our easements, something like that. But we'll never be on someone's property doing construction without an easement uh, prior to that. So, and the easement is what the folks signed that we compensate for. Does that answer your question? Or? Kind of, yeah. Okay. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm just thinking ahead. You're, you're, starting, you're starting here, but you've got somebody up here that's saying, no, nope, I don't want you on my property. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Well, and, and, and I don't care. Steps in, yeah. We do our level best to get along yeah. with everyone. Uh, I think we've got like a 98%. Really? Uh, that's good. Percentage to uh, voluntarily acquire easements. But we do have the right of eminent domain. We hate to go there. I know what I hate it too. But uh, they do give us that authority. Yeah. So. Okay. So there will be some agreement in place with that landowner prior to us going on there. Right. On the property. Okay. Are these a steel tower or are they a wood post? We're going to have a combination of both here. Are you um, corner steel? In, in the urban areas, we're going to use primary ste primarily steel going up along Beltway, then up through town. Uh, once we get out to the more rural area, the corners will be heavy steel, and then we'll have wood in between. So it's going to be a, maybe half and half. Yeah. Somewhere at this point, we'll have to get with the engineers. Oh. And ask them Just was wondering what construction turned. Okay. Thoughts, questions? Well, thanks for your time, and thanks for putting me on early on the agenda to <coughs> get the city now. So have yourself okay. a good day. Okay. Thanks for stopping, guys. Yeah. We appreciate appreciate the information. All righty. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, discuss, consider approval of resolution for the Monument Marathon. Mr. Holyoke, how are you tonight? Are you going to ride a bike in that again? Or is that, or is that a run? Is that a run or a bike? <laughs> a run. Is that, run. Are you running? <laughs> I'll probably try to move it again, yeah. Oh, I'm good. I'm squirting a lot on the tooth here. But, uh, I think you have before you a copy of the resolution, Jim. Uh, what we are asking for from the county is for the county to take over the control of Highway 71 from basically the Wildcat Hills Nature Center to Sandburg Corner uh, on the morning of uh, September 30th. Uh, the, the coning was started on 5 a.m. and the running portion closure would be roughly 7.15 until about 10 o'clock. Um, this is the 12th year of the, uh, the running of the marathon, and we've had absolutely perfect cooperation from uh, Sheriff Overman and his folks, and the city of Gary, the city of Scotts Bluff, and the county. Um, and it's been a, a tremendous event for uh, WNCC Foundation and our scholarship program. Asking for this uh, resolution once again. Uh, and I'd be happy to 
try to answer any questions you might have. Nothing's really changed in it, has it, Tom? Uh, there are uh, some small changes in the route this year. Uh, in prior years, we had zigzagged through the meadows. That's not going to be the case. We're also not going out on uh, uh, old 92 clear to regular 92. There was a very short span from our old 92 <coughs> met with 92 down to Roberts Dairy Road, and that's not going to be part of it this year. Uh, all runners, the, uh, the full marathon and the half, will turn at the uh, irrigation district just south, uh, the south of uh, Barnegan. Okay. Uh, the, the ones we would have in beat of all, I'm assuming, would be Steve. And <clears throat> has our county attorney or anybody looked this over? That anybody know of? Have you looked it over, Steve, to see the route? So, so you've seen the route, and you're all, you're all right with it. Sheriff, have you had an opportunity to check this over? I haven't, but I don't have any concerns about it. We've been doing this since they started. So nothing, that's why I asked if I anything's really any, changed with it. I don't have any concerns. I know the county attorney's looked at it before. The, what, what, they're, the, what they're changing is really minor, and it's probably better for staying off roads. Okay. We have a certificate of insurance attached, and I, I think that everything looks fine to me. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. I don't either. I think it's went well in the past, and when you're ready for a motion, I'll offer that. Okay. I'd move that we approve the resolution for the um, Monument Marathon. I'll and second that. Signatures of all, all the board members. Okay. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any other discussion? If not, record your votes, please. Do you have a copy for us to sign, Tom? Yes, sir. Okay. Or just... Kelly, have it, okay? Okay, to close? Close. Thank you. And we have five yeses. You can start at rest and I can just pass it around to me. Thank you, Tom. Okay, next item. Discuss and consider a special designated license for Flyover Brewery. Uh, Nikki? Correct. Yes, oh, there you are. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you did. You you did. I did. <laughs> I, <clears throat> one thing I might ask, and I, I was reminded, anybody that wishes to speak to the board, we need to have you come up to the, and you did. We need, need to have or if there any questions or comments. We need to have you come up to the podium to speak so that we can get it on the recorder. And you're, you're doing it just fine. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I am the marketing promotions and offsite manager for Flyover, and we're requesting an SDL um, to be signed for a drive-in movie event at the Skyview Theater out by the airport on June 2nd. Uh, Midwest Theater has approached us and asked that we set up a beer garden um, in a roughly 105 by 100 foot uh, area to the right of the screen. We would be bringing our trailer out with beer on tap. Uh, the area is fenced off. We would be carting everybody with bracelets. We would not allow any alcohol to leave the designated area, and if they wish to watch the movies, they would have to bring chairs into the area um, and watch the movie from the beer garden itself. Do you have wristbands and things? Yes, probably absolutely. For that? Yeah. I'm sure everything else is ran that way. Absolutely. Okay. What? <coughs> not a big deal, but the only thing I thought about was people are going to be driving out there to watch a movie and then driving home, correct? Do we have a concern with that at all, or anybody they have a to the flyover? Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I'm, I, and I'm sure that that's what I'm the. Sure they I'm sure they designated driver. I, I, uh, I, I reviewed this and I talked to Nikki, and I know that they, they, this group does a lot of SDLs. I've seen them do an SDL they did one out at the Balloon Fest last year, and so there was some concerns voiced, and so I was there. I saw what they did. They did exactly what they said they did, and uh, okay. so I, don't know, I support. I Very would good. say that I, I, as being the offsite manager, I am at 90% of our offsite with the trailer. So it, only because there's times when we're at separate events and I'm at one and the trailer's at another, I cannot think of any event where we have ever overserved the patron. So we're really good about that. Good. I, I figured you would. Yeah. All right. I take it very seriously. <laughs> you answered my question about, I was concerned about not having a fenced off area and that 
alcohol would be sold, like take it back to their vehicles, yeah, and I had a real problem with that. Yeah, we were very concerned about that too. Um, originally, when they approached us, we talked about having it be an over 21 event and having everybody be out of their cars with chairs in front of the vehicles. Um, but it's not going to be an over 21 event. So we said we have to have a barrier because yeah. we knew even with the state, we can't get an SDL. You have, to have, you have to have some kind of control. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you satisfy that for Okay. Us? What's the board's pleasure? I would move to approve the SDL for flyover. Is there a second? I'll well, second it. Any further discussion? Record your votes, please. Okay, to close. Close. And we have five yeses. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Nikki. You know All right. Good luck to you. Thanks, Next Thank item you. is discuss consider the chairman's signature on the 2024 community-based aid grant. Kristen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you snuck right up. up yeah. You snuck right up on um, us again. So I came and spoke to you a couple months ago about uh, having the signature on the grant. Um, we have been awarded the grant, and this is to say we are going to accept um, accept the grant award. Um, it's $126,151. We've done, we've used this grant funding for the last seven years. So this is the second year we've done it. Okay. Simply a pass through for us. Right. right. Just, I just need one. I just need one. Right. But no, I mean, the money's just a. Pass through um, yeah, for us. it is a reimbursement cost grant, us. grant, and um, it is the same system that we've used um, since I've started, and I started in November. Um, we just had our financial piece audited and did very well on that, um, and um, everything I've asked for, for has been reimbursed, and it's been fast. Good. So, like, I asked for this month's reimbursement on the 9th. They actually have approved it on the 9th. So, so we don't we don't have any trouble getting reimbursed on no. any, any of the money. So okay. No. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's the board's pleasure. I move that we approve the signature. Is there a second? All second. Any discussion? Record your votes, please. What? Try Me? again. And you have five yeses. Thank you. Clear to close. All righty. Thank you very much. You just need one signature, and that is I where. I have two copies. One right here and one right here. One's for Lisa. I'll just give it back to you right now. How's that? Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item. Receive tax increment financing redevelopment project progress report from the city of Scotts Bluff. Who's, who's reporting that? Just in your letter from them. Okay, everybody got a copy of the letter. We don't have to take any action on it. Everybody read the letter? And the next item is receive uh, TIF on report from the city of Gearing. We got a letter on that also. Okay, so we'll move on. Next item is to discuss uh, the Star Herald. Charlie, turn that over to you. So, in light of the recent news regarding the uh, fake news headline expanded Star Herald coming soon we're actually in the article it talks about uh, retracted uh, Star Herald coming soon um, I think it's I think we need to reconsider our decision back in December to or sorry January to name Scott's Bluff Star Herald as our official newspaper of record um, I reached out to NACO to see if there was any um, anything we should be concerned about regarding, um, you know, rescinding that decision, and I'm not ready to rescind that decision quite yet. But I am um, 
I probably will be, after receiving further guidance, um, I probably will make a motion in a future meeting to rescind our um, January decision um, and no longer run with the Star Herald as our newspaper of record. Um, there is a state statute 25-523 um, that tells us we have to have um, we have to use a local paper um, as designated in this statute. Um, Charlie, does this say paper or, or local media? Um, it says lo uh, legal newspaper defined. It does say newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, you know, the Star Herald uh, meets a lot of the requirements except for the portion of the statute that says it must be produced um, within the county, printed within the county. But then there's also a Nebraska Supreme Court decision um, regarding Wymore Arbor State, Inc. and Kororonek, Kororonek, um, where they actually decided that the mechanical acts of reproducing a newspaper um, outside of the county does not necessarily mean that it's um, not a local paper. Um, as long as the newspaper is still produced, published, issued, and distributed within the county. Um, so I think there's some things going on with, with Star Herald that if, if it is in fact going to be printed in Rapid City and distributed via U.S. Postal Service, I think that um, then, then they no longer meet the definition of a legal newspaper in Scottsbluff County. Um, what I would do, what, what my motion would be would, um, in the future would be to name the uh, KennyB.com and Twitter as the media of record for Scottsbluff County. Um, Twitter Blue um, is a service that governments can subscribe to with the blue blue check mark it, it makes you an official account uh, you, you can't be you cannot be um, oh what's the word I'm looking for um, shut off can't be shut off you can you cannot be um, well it, it just designates you as the official ac account so um, and uh, and I believe um, it would it would benefit our our constituents if they got their news from Twitter rather than the Star Herald. Um, get both sides of the story if, if they were to get their news there, um, as well as from KennyB.com being also uh, a place to um, get official Scotts Bluff County um, announcements, meeting notices, and that sort of stuff. But it's a major concern right now. Uh, what's happening at the Star Herald? Um, it's unfortunate. Um, I placed a classified ad uh, last week, and I read that if I had any concerns, I needed to contact the Tulsa World newspaper in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, um, and then with the with the article that came out late last week, um, you know, there's, I just, I, there are there are some concerns that our our constituents won't be served um, in the manner that was intended when this, when this statute was written and when the uh, legacy media was 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 thriving so I think it's time to change okay. it'll be an item we look at the next meeting in the future the next, or whenever the next meeting we'll have to get it on the agenda and then make a decision mm -hmm. of what we're going to do with it I think the decision by the Star Herald the, the change for them doesn't happen until June 13th is what I read um, so yeah, there's some time to do some more research, but it's definitely something that we should keep on our radar and start researching now. But we don't have to place ads in the newspaper any longer. It's it behoove us not to. And that, those are all my comments. Okay. Right now, the notices that we are required to put in, as far as media notices. 
just their schedule alone is going to be tough meeting your requirements. I have to they're, they're double check the deadlines for it. Well, they're going to be down to three papers a week. Right, but I would like us that publish in it to be included in the decision to not have it available, too. Well, have we checked with Candy B to see if they can publish my agenda, which I'm required to have out there? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it would. Um, I don't think the, the individual offices would have to stop using the Star Herald. I think we just declare that they are no longer our official newspaper of record. Okay. You can, just, if you want to spend the money to, to put a notice in there for, I just don't for the make in law without few people that are going to read it, then go ahead. Yeah, I don't, think, I, I, I don't think we're making law. I, I just think no, we're doing I what's best for everybody. No, I was exaggerating. I've been watching the legislature, too. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. And we'll, we'll have more discussion on that as, as we get more information. And, so and, I, and I don't disagree with you, Charlie. I, I, when I read that, uh, my wife and I had a long discussion about that. She reads that from cover to cover. That's one I have to convince. <laughs> okay. Ken, Ken, may I say something? Sure. Uh, Bob, I hate, I hate to do this. Can you come to the podium, yeah. please? I, I, I know it's tough. You, you just went. You just went through some stuff, and I won't even tell everybody what happened, because I because I know. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know how to say this or present this at a public meeting and not be discriminatory. I'm a senior citizen. This is what I have. The flip phone. I don't have a smartphone. I don't well, I've never seen Twitter. But I do like my news. And I am so heartbroken by what the Star Hills doing. We look forward to it. It costs us a lot of money to read that paper. But agriculture news, both Candy B and Star Hill. Basically not. So I would hope that this, and we always use this word community, I would hope that somebody, some entity, makes enough noise to know we are viable in Western Nebraska. Don't throw us under the bus, <coughs> please. We are viable. We're, we're better than that. We deserve better than that. And I urge leaders at all levels in this community to speak out. I don't know anything about Lee Enterprises at all. I don't know it at all. But I do know this. Our people deserve better. And our and news, my goodness gracious, uh, uh, news is so important. And, you know, what goes on here, a lot of people don't pay attention, but a lot of people do, and it is so vitally important. And our, our wonderful county sheriff, the news, that he, you know, that stuff needs to be reported. We're public people. So, you know, and, and Charlie, thank you. Bringing it out, and uh, but like I say, let's. I don't know what can be done, and, but I, I am so heartbroken over this. It's unbelievable. Remember back in the day when the farm and ranch section was three pages? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, and yeah. it was interesting. Good local information. Yeah, and we had good reporters. Yeah. You know, we just lost one last week. You know, the best there was, Howard Hale. Yeah. You know, so but you know, Sandy, Sandy Hansen. Old woman's probably crying herself to death up there. So. Yeah. But anyhow, the Torrington Telegram, if we get the Torrington Telegram, it's amazing. I've got three days a week, but wow, what a newspaper. You can't believe the news. It's unbelievable. So, anyhow, yeah, I think, it was, I think it was a shock to everybody. Yeah, yeah. But like I say, I, yeah. and I, I envy people that have Facebook and, and this Twitter stuff, but we don't have that stuff. 
we're not alone. You know, there's a lot of those folks that regard, there are some, you know, that in their mid-80s that do have it, but and then there's a lot of folks younger than us that don't have it. So. Yeah, and you're right, Bob. You make a good point that that's their, their, their only, their only outlet to, to trying to get whatever news is out there, whatever is reported. Yeah. I, I've got friends. They can't wait to get the paper in the morning, sit down in their easy chair with a cup of coffee, and read their paper. Well, even now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come by mail. Yeah. Folks that live in town, yeah. where I live, I get, I get my mail at 6, 7 o'clock at night. That's what, that's what I'll get my newspaper. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Bob. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss it more. Thank you so much. Okay. At this particular time, uh, we're going to move to executive session. In that session will be the board. It's to uh, discuss contract will be the board. And you have to leave. Is that correct, Mark? Okay. I'll have to leave him. I can, I can be here for a few minutes. Okay. Include him and then he can always All right. Uh, included in that will be the board, Lisa, and uh, the sheriff. So we'll move into executive session at I lost my 511, please. Do I have a motion? You. Do I have a motion? I'll, I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Uh, record your votes, please. Well, hang on, because I was not ready for that. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Five yeses. Let's we'll let Mark go right away and then. We're back in uh, regular session at 6.05. Okay. Call the roll, please. Meyer? Yes. Harris? Yes. Knapper? Here. Blue? Yes. Reisig? He is here. I think he made a quick stop. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, just as a nothing was decided as we're not supposed to do in executive session. No decision, no decision will be made now either. Moving on to public comments. Anybody in the audience like to make a public comment? <laughs> Steve's looking. <laughs> Steve is looking. Uh, move on to board and staff reports. Start with the board. Charlie, we'll start with you. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> you got nothing. My brain is fried. <laughs> Mark, you have anything? Uh, no. You, uh, most of you know um, I spent 10, 12 days in Texas. Uh, I, my aunt passed away there. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. So I had to be gone. So I haven't been able to attend some of the meetings that I normally would. And um, so I don't have anything to report. Okay. Yeah, I, I missed uh, two of my meetings last week because I was – I came over here to do some do some stuff. We met with some insurance information, and there was another one. We had and two. what? Well, there was two of them I was at. There was two of them. We, well, did you make both of them? And uh, we yeah. came over. We had the Regional West meeting. At the Regional West meeting, yeah. Yeah, yeah we had that, mm. and then we had the... Something else. So I, I, I did I made the, the aging meeting first thing in the morning, and uh, that was a good meeting. Those are always good meetings, a lot of good information. Uh, Mike, anything? Oh, just going to meetings. I got a 911 meeting tomorrow. Uh, I went out and looked at some kind of roads today and talked to a few customers. And uh, One customer yeah, we, very pleased with you, Steve. We're supposed to have a whole room full of people here tonight. Well, you got one in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he wasn't very uh, nice this morning, but when you guys went out and visited and fixed his situation temporarily, he was pretty happy with that, so. 
And that was Bryce. Yeah. So, then I looked at a few other rows, but with this rain we've had, it's just been an issue. Then I'll be I'll be speaking at a little cemetery up in Alliance next week for the Medal of Honor ride. So other than that, not too busy. Oh, at, yeah, I'll be speaking at uh, Shriners on Wednesday. Can Wednesday, I, I think. Yeah, go ahead. Can I mention one other thing about roads um, while we're on it? And that's uh, Bob Bush at church yesterday complimented you um, a lot about the roads and what kind of conditions they were in, particularly knowing that we had three to four inches of rain. And he felt that they were just as good as they could have been, and he was real happy. I talked to Bob too, and uh, Bob's biggest comment was that there's crown on these roads now that there hasn't been in the past. And Steve's been really working on getting these guys to crown these roads, and that's what's making these roads look a whole lot better. If you guys remember a couple of years ago when, when Linda came in with pictures of some of these roads that were just plumb, do you remember those pictures? They were totally underwater. Those roads were. I remember the blizzard pictures. Well, <laughs> those that was long after the blizzard. There was nowhere for that water to go because the roads didn't have a crown in them. They're starting to get a crown, and they're staying dry. Yeah, I've noticed that too. The roads I grew up on, I, I can see the I can see the crowns. So. Yeah, we just need to make sure not let Russ put any sand in sandboxes at, play, at daycare centers. That's right. That's it. Luckily, you move houses, you don't have to worry about it. That's it. As long as you just stay with moving houses, you'll be all right. <laughs> Steve, go ahead. Buddy. Uh, I guess overall. It, I still, after driving the roads, I still think we fared pretty well, really. Um, we only have two roads closed. Um, County Road X between 20, uh, 29 out south and Mobitis closed. It, it's a low water crossing. Um, they'll probably get that on tomorrow. It was pretty muddy in there yet today. And the other one closed. If you go to the very first picture, if you go back right there. That is on is the, that one? Yeah. Cool. That's right along the Deering Valley Drain out here off Carter. Um, wow, that's good. And good that is a culvert. So the only reason the road's closed is because it actually went out into the road enough that it, we thought we better close the road so nobody would go in there. So we'll have that for a repair here once we get some other things caught up. But that will all come out of the, out of the flood, uh, the Gary Valley drain part yeah. where all of us came yeah, That so moved a lot of soil. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, there's a, it's, a, it's a big hole. It's going to take a lot of fuel to fill that in. So um, it'll by far the southwest part. And, and, and you know the thing why like, it didn't all come at once like some of that stuff you, you know you right. get three three inches in wow. 40 wow. minutes you know or whatever I didn't know the Grand I think Canyon this is most of it, uh, part, part of this happened that Thursday night when they had the three, what, three and a half inches out there and that hail well, some of that hail out there from what I understand was knee deep really yeah, it was pretty pretty bad out there when they, were, they went out and waved it off at two o'clock in the morning out there so hmm. um, wow Some of the complaints today that we addressed, um, you know, there was 33 or 34, and this here is 33 right here, right off, right south of Highland. Um, this is just almost right out uh, Mike Zeiler's driveway here, looking south. Can we just close that road? <laughs> um, as, as she goes through these pictures, this is just a picture taken about every half mile down the road. Um, keep going. Now. Yeah, as you keep going. That's just getting to the county road. Mike's driveway right there. I think I just hit the end of the roll. Should I go back? Yeah. You know, I, I was flipping through before you stepped up here, too. Okay. So is that some of the ones we were just that, looking yeah, at? Yeah, that's just the ones you were looking at. Cool. Okay, you just, yeah. Oh, I can do this. Okay. I thought I had to open them. Okay, so that's the first mile. That's about another... Can you bring that zoom that one? I can zoom in that. That's Mike's driveway right there. Uh, Those roads are completely passable. They have not had a maintain yeah, all the of rain. You can drive this road. I drove at 45 while he's, you know. Um, if she I keeps know, going, this will just show the next mile line down. You know, there's some potholing in there in the center and stuff, but 
They're dirt well, roads. But it doesn't yeah. look like four inches of rain on there. They're, yeah. they're, they're, yeah. they're dirt roads, guys. But, yeah. but that crown they're putting on them is making all the difference. The water is going to go. This one here, I don't, I mean, this is almost like it never rained on this one. It's like, wow. That's, it's still, <laughs> 30, good. It's still 33. Um, so does that one, this the water, can it go on both sides or just the one just way? Just one side. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is about a mile and a half north of Highway 26. The next picture will be right at the intersection. That's looking down towards Highway 26. I didn't drive all the way down there, but it's pretty consistent. On County Road 34, I didn't take any pictures of that one. It was the, it was the same way. I mean, it, I drove 45 on a plum easy. Where Outside is some washing along the edges of the road, which is to be expected, and you know, some cuts and some potholing. That's just there all just stuff that can the main road itself is all passable. That's yeah. the main thing. And this is 28 going north to Lake Minotaur School. Um, as you can see, the washing along the edge. That's pretty common any time. Well, but you've got rain. several inches of rain here, right, guys. Right. Uh, it's continual rain, just continual. Uh, yeah. Right. Four days straight, five Lake days straight. The house that was mentioned in the text is right up there on the hill. That, uh, that's who's, Majors, that's, uh, that's uh, James Mazur. Yeah, yeah. James, yeah, Mazur's place. Okay. Uh, you know, you got a little. We did used to have a problem kind of right in this area where I'm at, to the, to the right side here. The low spot. used to wash out onto the road. And here just maybe a month ago, we went in there and built this up and changed his driveway. And it kind of stopped that, it looks like, because it's not obviously. You put a lot of that, we, we call it granite gravel, out in that general area last year. and On 27, a mile over. Okay. Yeah, so in, if you drive that road. That's what that's what would beat up the tires pretty bad, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's one that yeah, <laughs> that's flat. So Not my tires. Um, this is going towards the school, Lake Minotaur School on K. I don't have my computer. I really okay. don't have my computer yeah, here. That's fine. But um, on 35 and X, this would be southeast of McGrew. Um, if anybody is familiar with Steve Jomman, you guys are either down that way. Um, there's a house that sits on the corner there that is common to get in the basement flood at any time in the rains like this. Um, it's an area that you shouldn't have a basement, actually. You can dig a post hole and get water. Mm. So um, it kind of comes around the curve there and goes down and actually goes probably a quarter of a mile right down where Steve Jobs lives, and there's a drain there. It sits full of water all the time. So when you get these big rains, that water just kind of backs up and sits there and around the corner. It never really drains until everything, you know, it could take weeks to get that all the drain down. But it was built up by his house, and this morning apparently started flooding his basement. So we went out, he was pretty upset when I know when the foreman got there this morning, and then I got there. And, and, and the water's coming from the road into his yard? It seeps through the ground. Up enough. He has this problem even with the water table. So that that's nothing. I mean, that's, that's nothing we can do with that. No, we asked him what he wants to do. You know, three years ago, we cleaned that ditch out. It made, I don't know if it helped or not because it quit raining. Well, he so told me that when you clean the ditch out, it it stopped flooding. Right. What you is know, if you go well, hundred yards from his driveway, it's standing water all the way right. to the drain. Can I, what's the address? Yeah. Um, it's thirty-five and X. What? what? So nothing. We nothing we're going to do is really going to help that. So we're going to go in there. And Scoop, you know, scrape the drain out, you know, but there's still going to be the standing water. He has a, two sump pumps in the basement, and they're sitting there pumping into the ditch all the time. Yeah, um, he's, he's pumping live water in that from ground. So how down. far? How far is he to groundwater? Oh, a post hole. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty it's, high. There's a lot of drains. Well, I, I have the same. That, I have the yeah. same problem in my house. <laughs> same, that, same, uh, same deal. I'm familiar with the house <laughs> just to the east of a mile. I was friends with the guy who lived there before he sold the place. He had the same problem. He had a sump pump. In and it didn't have to rain. It would just be the ditch water and drainage from ditch water comes through. Yeah. Bloody space. Yeah. yeah. That land so north of his, you look out there, it's all sheep. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of sub-irrigated yeah. stuff. So where are you at here? I have, I'm like yeah, going yeah. east yeah, of Minotaur. I was looking through this whole thing. I got east of McGrew, I think. What? Find McGrew. Oh, find McGrew? Yeah. I got the address well. east if you want it. 
I what don't know how to. I just went to Google Earth. You can give me an address. I'll see if I can type it in. It's a uh, two zero 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 two eight County Road thirty five. Yep, right there. It's right there. Baird. Yep. Yep, Baird. Oh, makes you dizzy. Well, I've <laughs> <laughs> never flew around that quick before. Okay, so. That's quite a ride. Yeah. Okay, you want to go over to that top left corner, right over to the left, and up. That way. Keep going. That's the drain that this drains into. You can see there. Keep going. Keep going. There's this place starting to come on red. There's this place right here. Right. Right. So, there's a culvert that comes across the road. Water that sits right here in this corner, and this water comes across here. There's still water sitting here, but it's below where the culvert sits. Right. This area has water that sits right around here, and then it comes down to this drain, and then water. Well, you can see water sitting right there. Right. And it oh, just sits there until it hits that drain. So. So the water he's getting is coming from, from groundwater. Probably, uh, some of it is. Yeah. Say some of it's probably coming from the, the ditch sitting. But we cleaned that stretch out before pouring. He said. What is yeah, that? That's Joblin's Arena. Arena. Right. It's what? Just a Steve you know, Joblin's Arena. Arena. Oh, really? Yeah. They do oh. roping But there. you can see that the, that's the drain right there, and it sits full of water, and it's sitting full now. And same with that ditch. It just sits there. It's just not a Well, there's there's a lot of different. If you're going to get three inches of rain, you better expect There's it. a lot of different theories with with all right. of that. You know, we went through that over the Westmore area. Right. And they put that ditch and all that in behind. That didn't help anything. That doesn't. No. You still got groundwater. You got there. groundwater, and that's water what you're dealing with. Yeah. So, and when the river comes up, so does all that groundwater. Right. It just everything comes up together. So I know he was pretty upset this morning, and then uh, you know he, he blamed it that his driveway tube was plugged, and that was it. Well, it wasn't plugged; it had some debris in it, but it was draining. And is he sitting lower than the road? The house is lower than the road. Yeah, yeah that's the house not a good sits, The house sits in a hole. So. Oh wow. I mean, it's a super nice place. Don't get me wrong. It's just in. It's lower than the road. It's just sitting right there in a spot. That you may have to think. There's a, there's there's a history the, in that house. I don't know if anybody knew the bird is that owned the tiger paws of bear who yeah. used to live there. So there's a history with this house that it used to. It's prone to flooding when you get this stuff, and there's just not a good answer as far as the county thing is. To so even even if you put a berm, even if you put a berm around, that's you're not going to stop it from no. coming up underneath. No, because it's not coming over the ditch. No, it just seeps, yeah, seeps seeps back. Through, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna get a digger in. And We can't solve the problem. Right. We might help it a little bit. We might alleviate a little bit of it, but you know, I don't, there's no guarantee. That you know, the other the other thing he so, could do is to put some pumps on the outside in his in his yard and try to keep that water that table down. That is something down. he thought he might yeah. try to do as it best to put, put some water drains out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 seriously. Yeah. 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 And when that water sure table he, comes up, it just pumps it away yeah. somewhere yeah. else. Sure he pumps right. it down there. At least at least at least around where the house is at. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good help. Like Who's the owner of that house? I'm a little, like bit, a I'm a little bit of an expert when it comes to the groundwater in your house. Trust me. You get it all the time. I got a, I got a trout farm in my basement. So um, this complaint we did receive by phone, and um, J and 23, I believe, was on there too. Right. We received yeah. that. One. These other complaints that people get, we didn't have any record of these. Nobody's called us about any. I could probably have eight complaints in all of our since this rain started last week, and most of them aren't really even complaints. It's more of telling you wash out on this road or, you know something's wrong with this road or something so I guess I don't know Done why people good. are calling us to go fix it so if you exactly. don't know about it you can't do anything about it right, right. yeah so all right well I know right, I was happy to go out and see the 33 34 I don't look pretty good to me I mean, I'm day 23 we've thrown everything it's pothole we've thrown everything at the kitchen sink at that so <laughs> I've been here in nine years <coughs> yeah so what if, if it's getting 600 cars a day, is there something we, is that something we should look at in terms of paving or You know, you doing could, it's going to cost you a million dollars. You know, my only downfall to that is you know, we still have 160 miles out there that we can't fix. we got 160 we can't fix, so, so we, don't, we don't need one do more mile. we really want to pave another mile? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the tough call, I guess. But yeah, that's that's really the only solution to it. Well, know, we've, they, we've thrown, they've thrown millions at it. And this, Ken's been here long enough, I'm sure that it's been, you know, we've tore it up, we've put granite on it, we've done all everything we have, and it 
six hundred cars a day everything. with speeds of you know 50, 55 constantly in that mile, and this uh, speed and traffic count I did was in two thousand eighteen. I bet you there's a dozen more houses out there in the last four years just built on the south side of Jay there. You know before you get to the winery, I bet you there's you know that's just a booming little area. And, and, and that's that's so amazing. We build a brand new house on a road that that we know has issues. Yeah, it's not like it's. It, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like the ones it's that come and protest to us that build their house over by the dump. Right. It stinks right. over here. We need to get our, our it smells bad. Right. Our road's it not good. You know, it does. It gets maintained once a week religiously. Yeah. Um, it's a road where if you get that grader and go out there that morning, late at 6 o'clock by noon, that road is washboard. Yeah. Yeah, washboard in the ground. It's, it's, it's not like it's, not like it's neglected. So, it's not like you haven't yeah, done anything yeah, with yeah, it, you know. And, and that's one road that. Again, if, if we were saying, man, let's go pave a mile somewhere, um, asphalt a mile. That may be um, one of them. That might be, but there's others too, is my point, that right. some would argue K and some would that's argue a, other roads that that's might right. be. That's right. That's right. right. You know, I've thought about maybe trying to do this soil stabilization thing on it. I don't know, because it's got some bigger rocks in it, if that'll work. Is that the sugar beet stuff? Yeah, it's something like that, but it's a little different than the sugar oh. beet juice. But it's supposed to help for the dust, but then it's supposed to help hold all your. Is that calcium chloride or what are you doing? Um, this I'm not. This would come from uh, Nebraska Salt and Grain. They just got into it from like Envirotech. Oh, okay. So I'm not sure of everything that's that's in it. It's similar to so, that. but it'd be similar to something like that. Yeah. And that's the stuff that gets up in your wheel wells and the rest after, make, it after makes, it's first sprayed it on. Makes, yes. It makes a mess. Right. It after makes it's a mess. First sprayed on. There and you had some test areas that K, yeah, didn't you do did K? On, yeah, we've done it on K. It worked for what was it, 45 days where the dust wasn't too bad, and it did hold pretty good, pretty decent yeah. as far as K. Um, you know, uh, County Road 22 north of Lake Oil, uh, that housing division right up there, Jerry Darnell's done it a few times. Um, it seems to work for. Their SID. Yes. Homeowners. Type yeah. thing. No, it's a, they have a SID. Oh. Um, Kiltow puts that on for him. He has an arrangement with Kiltow Trucking to go through it and do that. We just close the road and water it down. When we had the cat, when we had the cattleman's ball, they put it on, put it on that road going out to the, to the little town that we build out there. Yeah. <laughs> we we told him not to, and then the guy went in and did it anyway. Kiltow brought it out. You should have seen the mess we had. All these, all these big. Oh. Seventy-five thousand dollar <coughs> four-wheel drives and all this stuff. It, they were a mess, and we knew that. We said, "No, we don't want that." And they put her down anyway. Yeah. One, one was my golf cart. So yeah, J and K <laughs> still got stuff on it. Final fix for those would be taxable. Yeah. yeah but, uh, it's a mess. It's a hard call to make when you have hundred some other miles out there that you need to you really want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, tell the tell the guys thank you again. I know they're I know they're all out there doing yeah, the they're best. Close to Twelve, like Deering was out from midnight to about three in the morning that one night. So, oh really? Huh? Just trying to keep everything passable. Yeah, put, trying to put flags out so people wouldn't drive in to push out so that sort of thing. So he still has what one position open? One <coughs> position. Didn't we talk about equipment operator three? Yeah, still have one position open. We finally got all of our greater positions filled. Good. So hopefully it stays that way for a while. Yeah. But we cannot. Nobody's applied for the weeds. For <laughs> What's wrong with that picture? So, but all in all, I think we cleared it pretty well, well. I guess, from what I've driven the last day here. So, but I'm not sure somewhere there's going to be some spot. That is. Well, try, you can't. If we don't get some apply. We might need to shut that down. There's not enough fly. We need to keep it continuing. We'll just put Scott, it you got anything? His place. <laughs> okay. We'll anything on legislation? Tomorrow there should be fireworks. That's, That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a dandy tomorrow. What's tomorrow? Five seven four. Is it the, is it is up second? Oh. Yeah. One bill. I yeah. Put, yeah, they put it all on one bill. Oh, you take or just attached the thing two bills together. Take the thing. <laughs> it's going to get ugly. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> okay. Nobody's got anything else. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I guess I got out like the.
think they'll get their eight hours, but yeah, we'll have to lab, yeah, that. I will.